Hi, everybody. I wanted to take you through a couple of use cases that we run into pretty heavily with Route Explorer with our customers, and that's finding a path across the topology and diagnosing a little bit more information about what may be going wrong with that path. In 15.2, we introduced the capability of being able to search for an individual prefix within the network. So if I'm looking for a source prefix, I can just type that prefix in. If it matches one already, uh, it will find exactly it will find that prefix. Um, but if you give a more specific, then it will find the router or routers that advertise that prefix. And then I can look for a destination. And so what I've done is is if someone comes to me with a problem saying, hey, I'm having trouble getting from this server to a destination, you know, yahoo.com, google.com, Netflix, you can just type those into the search bar and we will show the path across the topology to that destination. A couple things here is you can see that forwarding path across the topology to this exit router, and this is the router that it would hop out of my network to based on the BGP routing. Uh, I'll show you that and how we make that decision here shortly. Uh, you also notice this horseshoe, and that horseshoe represents it entering an RSVPT tunnel. So nothing really here that stands out as a problem, but uh, a couple things that we can do. One is if somebody's saying that this problem happened in the last half hour, I can set my time frame up here to a half hour and then that resets this play bar to a half hour increment. I can rewind that and step through minute by minute to look and see if that path has changed over that time frame. And what I've seen is that sometime during that time frame, I lost this connection across here and I see it exiting a different location. Now the way we have our network set up and kind of labeled, you can see Seattle to LAX probably would have been a better choice than Seattle out to uh, JFK here, but that's the way it was primarily. And we can step through this and continue to see uh, if there were any other time shifts or, or downtimes or changes in that route uh, during this time frame. And you can see one right here. So one of the things that we can do is we can step back in time uh, or we can play through these and we can look at what was happening during that time frame. So what I'm going to do here is kind of pause. I'm going to drill down into this path and you can see the path from Seattle to that exit router and I can start looking at the uh, latency on all of the hops to that exit point. I can also find out what uh, the resolutions were to get there. So in this case, it was following default. Uh, OSPF then was finding the, the next hop to get to that default. And it kind of continues down here until we get to an exit point. Uh, we hit that RSVPT tunnel, and then we get to that connected next hop uh, to exit. Along that path, I can see the device availability, the link availability, and I see those at 100%. Uh, I can see any events that may have occurred along that path during this time frame, but since the availability was at 100%, probably not going to have many events that are going to affect that uh, path. Remember that availability is based on whether I can deliver traffic across that link. So it doesn't really matter if it's pingable or not. What it matters is, do I have an adjacency between, in this case, LAX P102 and ORD P121? And throughout that half hour period that I was looking at. Now I can set the time period to a longer time period. I could set it to an hour, or a day, a week, uh, and see what the availability was over that time frame. But let's kind of continue down and look at uh, issues along that. So our Performance Explorer is also pulling in information about interface in, interface out along that path. You can see a couple of links are pretty uh, high in utilization, but not critical. Uh, memory utilization, CPU utilization along that path for all of the routers there. And then there seems to be quite a bit of deviation in the latency. So if I hover over here, I can see my normal latency is about 16 milliseconds. 
Now it's about 48. That's probably not too big a deal, but uh, it gives me the information that I need to look at a path and see what's been changing in the topology. One of the additional capabilities that I can look at is, are there problems that are kind of generic throughout the network? And so I can go to an overview of my whole network and see what links or what devices are down within the topology. And I can scroll through some of those. And so I can see which ones have problems and which ones am I likely to focus on within the topology, which ones are low availability, which ones are high availability. So, uh, you know, knowing that these ones are down for a reason, I'm going to skip on down and I'm going to look at these ones and see that I may have some flapping that's going on here. I can drill into that uh, ORD link and over that last half hour period, I can see that there was one kind of big outage uh, along this time period. I may be able to even extend this out to an hour and see did I have problems within that hour or maybe st extend this out to within a day and I can see I kind of have a regular outage that's going on here. So this is probably something that I want to work on relatively soon to get uh, this back up and operational. So kind of using these features, I can do internal paths across my topology. I can do paths to external elements and I can start tracking down these problems. Uh, we have had situations where we have customers who are getting you know, hundreds and hundreds of these types of requests every day, and they do analysis uh, on as many of them as they can fit in within that day. What Route Explorer has brought to them is the ability to decrease the amount of time it takes for them to figure out, is there a problem along that path or should they be focusing away from the network and looking at the performance of the servers uh, between source and destination rather than the network. So hope this has been helpful to you, uh, and we'll talk to you soon with our next installment. Thank you.